Okay, welcome everyone to the uh, webinar on um, being an iSTEM instructor. My name is Caitlin McGuire, and I am the iSTEM coordinator for the Idaho STEM Action Center. And today I'll be talking a little bit about what iSTEM is and um, how to be an iSTEM instructor, as well as how to apply to be an iSTEM instructor. I am also joined by Karen Leitman who is a veteran iSTEM strand provider and has taught for many years. I'm going to go ahead and let Karen introduce herself. Go ahead, Karen. Okay. My name is Karen Lehman. I teach at Idaho Falls High School. I have been teaching for about 30 years. I taught for the first 19 at uh, the middle school level. And then this last 10 years I've taught at the high school level. Um, I've taught everything from physics to chemistry to biology and a little bit of earth science. And also on the line we have Rich Sowell, who is or was an iSTEM strand provider last year. So Rich, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I thank you, Caitlin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Rich Stoll. I'm a uh, informal educator residing in McCall, Idaho, and this was my first year presenting during iSTEM, which I, uh, I did the four days up at North Idaho College. Okay, at this time I'm going to talk a little bit about what iSTEM is and go into the details of being a strand instructor. So iSTEM is a professional development opportunity for formal and informal educators. So um, in your strand you may have informal educators from museums or libraries or other organizations. Um, participants attend these four-day workshops, or what we call strands, and these four-day workshops provide hands-on and project-based activities that tie into real-world applications. And we hope that participants will be able to walk away with ideas to develop their own lesson plans. The workshop time is broken up with general sessions in which participants hear from keynote speakers, um, they put do activities and have an opportunity to network with their colleagues. Uh, field trips are also a component of the workshop and we highly encourage strand providers to organize a field trip for their participants. However, they are, they are not required. But these field trips provide an opportunity for participants to um, see the real-world application of the content that they're learning in their stream. Participants also receive a kit of materials to implement what they've learned. The kit is valued at $200, and it's up to the strand provider to um, build those kits and purchase the items for those kits using our funding. And lastly, the participants um, can get up to two graduate-level professional development credits for attending and one additional third follow-up credit with an assignment in the fall. And lastly, iSTEM is fun. It's a great opportunity for educators to come together, learn from one another, network, and, and really be on the other side of things than they typically are, in that they're, they're the students and they're the ones um, and doing, doing the activities. So here is a quick video on uh, what iSTEM is, I think it sums it up quite nicely, so I'll go ahead and play that. iSTEM is a gold standard in teacher professional development. It gives teachers the opportunity not only to network with teachers from other districts, but they also uh, learn from other educators, learn a new set of skills, and most importantly, they leave with resources, tools, and materials ready to implement this professional development into their classrooms the very next year. iSTEM focuses on inquiry-based problem solving and project-based learning on topics of interest to Idaho, its industries, and their needs. Through the generous support of its partners, iSTEM provides these opportunities to teachers at little or no cost. Institute expenses, materials, and college credits are covered. All of the knowledge I've gained, all the materials i gained, the fact that I haven't had to pay for anything to be able to do this um, is exactly why every teacher should come and do this. 
in the classrooms of Idaho's talented teachers, these resources enhance learning and expose students to real-world applications of STEM. Scientists and engineers are the world's problem solvers, and will be more and better prepared students to solve the challenges of the future. Consider becoming an iSTEM partner and help prepare today's students to become the scientists, engineers, and inventors of tomorrow. Okay, so here's just a snapshot or a quick list of some of the strands that we had last year at iSTEM. And you can see it ranges from everything from drone training to STEM activities for primary students. Um, we had a strand last year that did origami to teach math. Um, we also had some makerspace uh, strands as well as an aviation strand and even coding for primary educators. Uh, so this is just a snapshot of the 30 strands that ran last year, but I wanted to give you an idea of the range of possibilities um, for, for ISTEM. So ISTEM occurs at um, six different locations across the state the last two weeks of June. Here are the dates for the six locations um, in the summer of 2019. You'll notice that the top three run um, that third week of June, and then the bottom three run that fourth week of June. Sometimes we do ask STRAM providers to teach at more, at more than one location if they are interested in doing so. So in the application, we ask you to choose your primary and secondary sites and indicate whether you would be willing to teach twice and travel. This is an example of what an agenda looks like at a particular location. So this was at College of Southern Idaho last year. The day typically starts off with a morning session where everybody from all the workshops is together and the participants hear from a keynote speaker or um, engage in an activity. And then everyone breaks off into their individual instruction, or excuse me, individual workshops and there's about three hours of instruction before everybody comes back together for lunch. Uh, during lunch, participants may also again hear from a speaker. And then after lunch, you break off into your individual workshops and you have about three hours of instruction before the day comes to an end and um, everybody comes back together for, for the last general session of the day. On the third day, that's typically field trip day, uh, field trips can be either a half a day or a full day. This is dependent on what you uh, schedule for your strand. You can do more than one field trip. Um, and if you want to do field trips on two days, that's also acceptable. But typically, the field trip's on the third day. The fourth day, um, we ask that strand providers provide time for the participants to really reflect on what they're doing and what they've done so that they can start developing their lesson plans uh, for when they return to, to their classroom or teaching environment. We also have a survey that we require of all participants on that last day. So the afternoon is really reserved for um, reflection, lesson plan development, as well as um, our survey. This year's theme for iSTEM, so there's a theme every year, this year's theme is project-based learning with a focus on Idaho's standards. Uh, we have new science standards that came out, and so we would like the strands to tie into either the science or math standards or any other uh, teaching standards. If you are teaching a strand that's appropriate for informal educators, we still encourage you to tie the content to the standards because the more contact students have, whether in or out of school, with those standards, um, the better they'll do um, in the long run. And again, uh, we are going to focus on lesson plan development that fourth day because the third optional credit will involve um, the development of a lesson plan. And so participants will have to develop a lesson plan to receive that third credit. So we would like to give them time on that fourth day. To start that. So what does it involve to be a strand provider? 
these are the key items we look for um, and that we ask of our STRAM providers. So you need to provide about 20 hours of instruction time across the four days. Uh, so again, that's about three hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon of each day. Um, the strand instruction should be hands-on, project-based, and tied to real-world applications. And we're really looking for project-based learning uh, this year. You are also required to create a budget for your kit. And you have $200 per participant, so per kit. Uh, you're responsible for purchasing the materials, and we will give you the funding for that. And the key part about these kits is that they should be designed so that the participants can return to their classrooms or museums or libraries and easily implement what you have taught them. You are encouraged to uh, plan a field trip. It's not required. These field trips can be to local businesses or industry partners to really demonstrate that real-world real applicability of what they, they're learning in your strand. All strand providers are required to attend our February 22nd training day. This is a full day. It'll be in Boise. We will provide uh, costs for travel as well as reimbursing of this group for you. There will also be two follow-up conference calls in April and May, and those dates and times are to be announced. But this is just to check in with you and provide additional support as you finalize your plans for your strand. We also ask that strand providers um, review participant applications. So in February, we will open the application for participants to attend ISTEM. And these applications are scored based on a rubric, and we ask that the lead strand instructor reviews 20 participant applications and the assistant strand provider reviews 10. Uh, we will use these, the scores that you provide to um, place participants into strands. And lastly, when ISTEM is all over, we ask that you provide a final report to us, which is a series of guided questions about ISTEM, and that you return in your receipts and any documentation that we need um, about your strand. This is an example of an, a schedule that was set up for a strand last year. This was an agricultural strand. This example is available on the ISTEM website that I will provide at the end of the presentation. I just wanted to highlight a few things about this um, agenda that uh, are what we think are, is an exemplar uh, schedule for a strand. First, um, the strand provider started off the first day asking the participants their perceptions of agriculture. So she was getting an understanding of her participants and seeing what they knew, which is really a great starting point uh, for the workshop. Then she dove into her lesson plan, or lesson number one, which is inquiry-based. How can we feed 9 billion people in 2050? We are very much looking for these inquiry-based, project-based um, activities that are supported with hands-on um, activities. And so this um, strand did an excellent job of, of setting up the workshop instruction that way. Then she goes to lunch, and then all the participants are brought back together to the workshop after lunch, and she asks for reflections from the morning session, which again is a great opportunity to understand your participants and also give your participants time to think about what they're learning and how that can be incorporated into, into their teaching environment. And then lesson two, again, is an inquiry-based approach to learning. On day um, three of this agenda, uh, the strand provider went on a field trip. She actually did two field trips. She also invited um, a speaker into the workshop, which is fantastic. We encourage that as well. So um, please look for this example schedule that's on the ISTEM website to give you an idea of what we're looking for. This is a very Thought, well thought out, fleshed out lesson plan. We don't um, expect you to have this by the when the application is due on December 1st. 
but we'd like you to know what we are ultimately looking for um, when it's time for ISEM to happen in June. In the ISEM application, you can download this template for the strand instruction agenda, and that we ask you to re-upload it uh, with your ideas in there. So similar to the exemplar um, agenda that I just showed you, we ask you to list out the activities or lessons that you'll be teaching, a brief description of them, any materials or things that you'll need for that activity, and a rough estimate of the time. Again, we know that every single detail will not be determined right now, but we'd like to understand your thought process and a general idea of what you will be presenting. Uh, field trip ideas can uh, run the gamut. So last year we had a strand that uh, was focused on pollination and monarch butterflies. So the strand instructor took his participants to a local um, horticultural center where they learned about growing milkweed. We also had a strand in eastern Idaho that went to an engineering firm and talked to engineers. And what came out of this field trip was a lot of great opportunities for the participants to invite engineers into their classrooms to be mentors for their students. We work closely with INL, so if you are teaching in Eastern Idaho, at College of Eastern Idaho, or um, Idaho State University, we can help arrange for a field trip to INL. And lastly, you can have um, in classroom field trips, so last year we had a virtual reality field trip, or sorry, virtual reality strand, and their field trip stayed in the classroom and they went on a virtual reality uh, field trip. We strongly encourage strand providers to work with partners, um, whether this be from industry, from higher education, or from other agencies such as, as Fish and Wildlife, or health and wellness. Um, and the goal here, again, is to really tie the content to a real world application. You can work with partners to bring in guest speakers to your strand or to arrange field trips. Um, we also have a program if you find a partner who wants to support in your kit. Um, so let's say your kit is going to cost more than $200 per person. Um, and you find an industry partner that will support additional money for your kit, the STEM Action Center will match that donation by 50% up to $5,000. So this is a great way to enhance those kits that you'll be providing your participants and is a great way to partner um, with industry or an agency. This is a budget template that is provider application. We ask that you estimate um, the cost of a $200 kit by listing the item and the cost per item and providing a brief justification or note for that item. Please note that there's a line item for shipping because a lot of strand providers um, do buy their items online, whether that's through Amazon or other avenues. And so um, you'll need to put in a shipping cost. You do not need to account for tax. We are tax exempt, so you should not be charged tax for your purchases. If you're going on a field trip that requires a fee, let's say you're going to a museum or going on a tour and there's an admission fee, that cost has to come out of your $200 per kit. And so that can be included in the budget here. And then there's a few uh, lines uh, additional lines for anything else that you may that you may need, but again, your total amount on this budget should be two hundred dollars or less. Participants do expect um, a a full two hundred dollar kit, so try to maximize uh, your money and spend your full two hundred dollars per kit. And as a side note, if your field trip requires um, transportation, which them do, 
that is actually provided, those costs are provided by us, so you do not have to include that in your budget template. The only portion of your field trip that needs to go into the budget template is if there's an admission fee um, for your field trip. So this template is in the application. You download it, fill it out, and we upload it. So how do you apply to be a SPAN provider? You visit this website, stem.idaho.gov slash grant, and that um, gives you access to our portal. You can either create a new account, or if you already have an account, sign into your existing account and the iSTEM strand provider application will be one of the options uh, for you to apply for. If you want to know more information about iSTEM in general, um, you can go to stem.idaho.gov backslash iSTEM, and there there's a lot of information about being a strand provider. There is um, the budget template, the agenda template, there's that exemplar agenda, there's also a fact sheet um, with frequently asked questions about being a strand provider. Um, and then if you have any questions at all, please email me. My name is Caitlin. I am the iSTEM coordinator for the STEM Action Center. And I can be reached at iSTEM at stem.idaho.gov. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Rich so he can just provide some useful tips that he had or um, some tricks of the trade. So, Rich, are you, are you there? I'm still here. Thanks, Caitlin. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, as a first-time uh, strand provider and uh, an informal educator, uh, and kind of in reflecting on the experience, I broke it down into four different, different areas that uh, might be helpful. Uh, the first one, of course, is the time and the effort that it takes to submit your application and put together all the materials you need to be a strand provider. And sometimes it can be easy to underestimate how much time that might take. In my particular case, uh, most of the materials I had already, um, but they were in smaller chunks, uh, individual little units that were um, delivered in different venues. And so it took some time to pull all of those together, find out a good way to be able to transition from one unit to the next, and then kind of build it throughout the four days so that it made sense, so that we started off rather simply and ended um, with higher complexity. Uh, I did have a field trip built in on day three, and uh, it was actually uh, two field trips that were, one was piggybacked after the other. Um, fortunately, at North Idaho College, they do have an aerospace uh, program, they have an aerospace center, so since this was uh, through the lens of aviation, we did take a field trip and visited the aerospace center where the participants uh, really got some hands-on. Uh, we all got to bend some sheet metal and everybody bucked some rivets, and we watched uh, a destructive test on some composite uh, materials that were laid up, so uh, it, was, uh, it was a really good experience, I think, for the participants. Then we had lunch at the Airspace Center, which was provided uh, bag lunch uh, as part of the trip, and then hopped over to the uh, nearby airport uh, in Coeur d'Alene, and we had a, a tour of the maintenance facility at Empire Aerospace, and uh, got to see the uh, rather large equipment that uh, the mechanics were working on, and visited the avionic, avionics shop, uh, composite layup shop, so they got a pretty broad brush of uh, different things in aviation other than just becoming a pilot. Of course, the other, um, the other areas, bring your passion, bring your flexibility. Um, in my case, as an informal educator, uh, teaching teachers who are in a classroom setting, uh, I obviously brought my passion for the subject that I knew about, but I was also flexible enough to try to learn who the participants were and have them bring their experiences into the mix as well and uh, have them kind of share their experiences, how they might take some of the material that I was providing to them and, and incorporate it in their classrooms, uh, maybe similar ideas that they were doing that we could share. So I think I learned uh, as much from them as hopefully they learned from me. The next one was to uh, build in breaks and movement. And uh, so we did have a lot of uh, experiential activities that were built in, but 
but also uh, each morning and right after the lunch period, we made sure that we got up and moved and did something totally different. Uh, fortunately, one of our participants was a, uh, uh, in health and fitness, and so uh, the weather was nice. We would go outside, take a break, just totally get out of the classroom environment, do something totally different. Uh, we had some outdoor games that, were, that we did, some outdoor stretches. So I think that was important just to break that up, change the mindset a little bit, and then come back in and uh, feel a little bit more energized. Uh, and I also mentioned the hands-on field trip. So get to know your participants, uh, tie into their knowledge and experience. Um, get a field trip if you can, because I think that's a, a really exciting part of this uh, whole process. And uh, keep in mind, four days, that's a lot of content. Uh, there is plenty of time in the four days to not go really slow, but you don't have to go really fast either. Uh, you do have the time to spend time on different things and, and really explore uh, different aspects of whatever whatever it is you're trying to deliver to the participants. Caitlin, back to you. Great. Thanks so much, Rich. Um, and, and I just wanted to um, follow up on some of the things you said. Um, the participants might not necessarily be STEM educators. Um, we do have art teachers take this. We do have, as, as Rich said, physical ed uh, teachers do this. So it's open to any educator. Um, so it is great to get to know your participants. You will get a list of your participants um, and their emails by May 1st. And you're encouraged to reach out to them before um, the ISTEM Institute so you get to know who they are, what grades they teach, um, what their interests are as far as um, being part of ISTEM so you can help tailor um, your material. And again, there may be some informal educators in there as well. Um, and when you apply to be a strand provider, we actually ask if you feel your strand is appropriate for informal educators so that we can advertise it to those informal educators as well. I'm going to go ahead and let Karen introduce herself, and then she's going to provide some of her tips and tricks and insight into being an iSTEM uh, instructor. Go ahead, Karen. One of the things that impressed me kind of about the ISTEM program and the reason I wanted to be involved is I, I as a much younger teacher, have been involved in the Exploratory in San Francisco, which is very, built very much like the ISTEM program. And I thought that at this point in my life, it was time for me to start giving back. So I decided to go ahead and start teaching STEM, and that was about five years ago and uh, I enjoy doing it. Um, I do feel it's a, a opportunity for me to go ahead and give back uh, some of that great instruction that I got when I was a younger teacher. And uh, it does a whole lot of good for um, our, our colleagues who um, are either new to uh, teaching ISTEM kinds of, um, of lessons. Um, and uh, it also uh, is going to benefit their students as well. So that's kind of why I like teaching for ISTEM. Um, now, taking that passion into to what, I, what, what I do, I do an awful lot of hands-on, and I do do some project-based lessons as well, which is what this year's ISTEM is, is surrounding. And... Um, I, I just love the physical science part of it, as well as the life science, too. But the physical science, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with the kids that gets them really jazzed about science and about getting their hands into actually doing some science and uh, taking some data and doing some analysis on it and trying to come up with um, constructing their their own knowledge in science as well. Um, so that's kind of what you know what 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 jazzes me up about going ahead and um, giving giving back uh, so that the students really can benefit. Now, tips and tricks for iSTEM. Uh, first of all, whenever you get the iSTEM application, you really need to read through it. You really need to take a look at the objective and take a really good look at the rubric as well. Uh, those two together are going to to uh, guide you to really having a, a great strand to present. And um, after that, then it's, it's called dig in and start taking a look at your lessons, make sure that they are going to um, 
reflect what the objectives are um, for what the the program is doing at the time. Like I said, I know this year is project-based learning, um, so I would really get into taking a look early as to what kinds of project-based learning there, there are already programs that are all already out there, and taking a look and seeing if you can't kind of meld and mesh what you want to do in with that kind of teaching modality as well. Now, actually, being a strand provider, uh, one of the first things that I do is I do have a uh, intro letter that I send to my uh, strand participants as soon as I know who they are. Um, and that letter always has kind of a interest kind of survey first. Uh, I want to know um, what level they're teaching. I want to know what their experience is with the subject matter. Um, if there's a tech um, item that is going to be given with the, with the program, then I also check to see what their um, experience is with that tech item as well. And then I just want to know what they want to get out of the program as well, too. So I usually ask the question is, you know, why are you taking the, the program? What do you anticipate you're going to be able to bring back to your classroom? And that gives me kind of a good idea to get started with as to who, who I'm dealing with. And I run um, strands that usually encompass from the later elementary up to high school. So it's a big range, and um, I, I've, over the years, have learned that, that what we really need to do after we get done with an activity is that we really need to go through and do some sharing. Um, and that's really kind of what the, uh, the participants really liked this last year, um, especially in Twin Falls because I did have an even range of about um, four, four people that were in the, the early elementary and they, I, I had a couple, a couple were even first grade teachers. And then, um, I had a couple of middle school teachers and then a couple of high school teachers. So we really did run the gamut and what we need to do is really go over and get some ideas. There was a lot of networking that occurred after the, the lessons because they got a chance to really say, okay, how would you use this at your level? Are there any other ideas? So we really did bounce off um, a lot of ideas that um, the teachers, especially the elementary teachers, really seem to appreciate um, being able to do that. Um, and then that first day, um, what I do that, that uh, evidently not all strand providers do is that I make sure that they have a full agenda of what's going to be happening when they have to be at meetings um, that are not in the classroom when we're in the classroom. And also, um, I put along with that what uh, the field trip is going to be, where it's going to be, phone numbers with that, some of those kind of housekeeping items that they just appreciate knowing what's happening, what's going on. So um, that's kind of to start out with from there. And then I make sure that I jam pack every day. I have more than enough uh, activities for the uh, participants to do. And I try to make sure that I get them the most bang for their buck on their kit, kits too. I will go um, the extra mile to make sure that um, I get as, as much out of those dollars that are provided for us. Um, a lot of times my kit, if they were to actually go retail for it, would be somewhere between $275 and $300 just because of the deals I try to make and try to get, um, you know, discounts on stuff and things that, that we need to do. Um, so that's, that's something that I do from there. And then we actually use that kit uh, each day. We try to use every item that is in it. Um, as I said, I do jam back things, so there are times that we don't have time to get through everything. But I also, in that case, usually make sure that there are some instructions to do whatever it was that I had to leave out because we didn't have enough time. Um, and number one, I try to make it fun. Um, I want to have fun do it, and I want to make sure that the, uh, the participants have fun as well. Great, Karen. Thank you so much. I think you 
hit on a lot of really key points. Uh, one, reaching out to your participants and knowing your participants is really important, um, as well as um, making the most out of your kit and working to get uh, discounts on a lot of the materials. That's, that's a good way to get more bang for your buck, which is great. And um, another point you made, which I think is key, is, is having more things to do than you potentially can fit in that time frame because um, you don't know the pacing that might happen in your strands, so, so that's good. And then I really liked your point about time for reflection and networking because we find participants really value that time, especially um, getting to know other educators who um, may be teaching in similar size schools and things like that. So great, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's the gist about that. Um, other than, yeah, if you get to go ahead and be a strand provider, it's a great experience. Um, you get to meet a, uh, a lot of really great people, and uh, it just is, is fun to, to do it. So uh, by all means, uh, go for it. Thank you so much, Karen. Now let me just stop here and see um, what questions have. And I see we have a question. Can part of the purchase kit include an account to a service? Um, if you are referring to a field trip cost, um, we yes, that is part of your $200 um, for each kit or any sort of service involved. And if I didn't answer your question, please let me know. Okay, Diana is asking it is ed standards based where we target a specific grade or a range of grades. You choose the grade that you would like to target. So um, if your content covers K through 12, then it covers K through 12. If you feel your content is better for just K through 3 or 6 through 8, um, you put that in your application. We've heard that it's easier to teach to a targeted age range. Um, because then those participants attending your strand will be within that age range and, and you can just dive in more to the material and, and focus your instruction. Participants are placed into your strand based on the grade range that they teach and the grade range that your content is covering. Um, so we have heard it's easier if you have a narrower range, but if you feel like your content covers a lot of grade ranges, then that's totally acceptable. Charles is saying an online account for code anywhere. Sure, so if the participants need to pay for that online account, that can be part of their kit. Um, some other ideas I've seen is um, subscription to magazines or some other online service that can be part of the kit. Books can be part of the kit. Um, basically, you have $200 to spend per to help you um, with their instruction and to help them implement what they're learning in their own classroom. Um, Charles also asks, if we want to get sponsorships, can we say that we want one with, without actually having it yet? Yes. In your application, we ask if you are thinking about approaching a sponsor. We don't expect you to have it at this point at all. Um, we know that that takes time. So we just ask in the application whether um, you're thinking about it, and um, and we expect you to do that. You know, after your uh, strand is ex is accepted for the program. Diane asks, do we need transportation and lunch costs in the field trip? No, you do not. We will cover those costs. The only cost in the field trip section would be if there's an entrance fee to something. Or last year we had a group go on a boat tour, so that costs money per person. Um, but we cover transportation and lunch costs, so you don't have to put that in your budget. But good question. Um, okay, Charles asks, I was thinking of having a student be my assistant. Um, yes, that is great. So let's go over um, costs and reimbursements. So as a lead strand provider, you would receive $1,500, and then your assistant would receive $500. That assistant can be anybody. It could if you want it to be. Um, both of you uh, will get your travel reimbursed um, for the ISTEM 
training if you are, um, I think it's traveling over uh, 25 miles um, per day. Um, and then you'll also get reimbursed for travel for the, the one day training on February 22nd if you're traveling over 50 miles. Um, if you are an educator and need a substitute uh, teacher uh, reimbursed for that day, we will also reimburse um, your school for that cost. Um, and let's see, you can put the student, you can just, you don't, if you don't know who your um, assistant is at the moment, that's totally fine. Um, we, we have assistants come on um, through, through the late winter, early spring. So that's okay if you don't know who they are at the moment. Um, as soon as, if your strand is accepted and you do find an instructor, we just ask that you let us know as soon as possible so we can get their paperwork started. Um, any other questions? So we actually do the lesson plans that we would like to encourage them to do with the students. Is that how your yep. presentation goes? It can be, yep, I've seen it done both ways. I've seen um, some strand instructors have the lesson plans and then they walk it through, walk the educators through it and then the intention of the educators is that they learn and, um, and use it in their classrooms. Um, I've also seen it and I think this might have been Rich's approach, correct me if I'm wrong Rich, but you provide the content and then um, the activity and the Educators will go back to the classrooms and produce the lesson plans themselves. Am I right, Rich? Yes, uh, and, and in fact, uh, one of the things I built into the kits uh, was a uh, thumb drive for all the participants that had all of the video material, the PowerPoint the slides that I had, uh, any of those kinds of uh, resources and materials so that they could pick and choose and mix and match in addition to the other supplies they have, which reminded me of one other thing as well, the $200 um, allowance per participant for their kits. Make sure you spend all of that money. Uh, I made the mistake as a first-time provider of uh, trying to be as frugal as I could be and uh, saving some money on that, so I came in uh, fairly well under budget on the, uh, on the kits. Uh, and then the, uh, the participants wanted even more supplies uh, than I had anticipated. And so uh, uh, we did get that straightened out, and I was able to provide uh, additional supplies. So, so use up that money. Give them as much stuff as you can, because you never know how long it, it needs to last in their classrooms. Caitlin? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, that you try, We really want to provide the educators and participants um, enough material so that they can turn around and use this in their classroom in the fall. So think about that while, while you're developing, developing your kits. Um, and again, we, we are also encouraging strand providers on that last day of your strand to give the participants time to reflect on what they've learned and start to develop their own lesson plans or start to think about how they're going to implement the lesson plans that you're showing them into their own classrooms. Um, they do have about a two month break or a month and a half break until they get back into their classrooms. And so the idea is we want to give them time to um, start developing how they're going to implement this during iSTEM so that they don't have a month and a half and then they are like, oh, let me start thinking about what I learned at iSTEM and producing um, a lesson plan. So we are going to encourage that that, that last day there's time available for that. And we didn't do that last year, but, but we're going to encourage that this year. So if you don't have lesson plans, that's okay. Um, just providing the content and the activities um, and allowing the educators to do what they do best, which is come up with creative lesson plans that they can gear towards their students. Any other questions or comments? Rich, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, just uh, you'll be putting in a lot of hard work, but it'll it'll definitely be worth it. It's a it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the whole process and uh, getting to meet and network with a lot of other uh, educators as well. And uh, obviously, we're getting all of the people who are 
really passionate and want to put in the extra effort. So it, it really makes for a nice learning environment. I agree. And we got the feedback from last year's ISEM. And um, overwhelmingly, the number one thing that everybody loved was the strand instruction time and the strand instructors. So um, as strand instructors, you're really key and integral to ISEM. And so we appreciate your interest in doing this. And my role with the STEM Action Center is to help support you and help you develop your strands. Um, so please reach out if you have any questions about the application process, about developing your strand, um, whether you're questioning um, approaching an industry partner or thinking about a field trip, anything like that, um, please reach out to me. That concludes the presentation. Thank you.